Welcome Sagittarius to your in-depth monthly horoscope for August 2023 for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to share some standout information to begin with, but please stay with me. I will explore in much greater detail all the ins and outs and timings particularly relevant to your sign. Now your ruler is Jupiter and Jupiter is very much about hope and it starts this month in such a sensational alliance with Mars, the planet of passion and of drive. Now Mars is in the part of your horoscope to do a success and Jupiter is in the part of your scope to do with the details. Not something that you often are so minded to invest in because you're excited by the big picture. But this combination is really a great way for you to tear into this month. There's so much more to share with you, not least the combination of energies in your sister fire sign of Leo as the sun combines with Venus in a very special way at the heart of the month. Please stay with me for more. I'd like to share with you a very special opportunity. This year is absolutely racing by and year 2024 is speeding towards us. However, if you order your year 2024 personal horoscope forecast now, based on your unique birth data, I will prepare for you the rest of year 2023 free of charge. But also within my package of 30% off, you can get your character analysis report, your life roadmap. This helps you to understand the patterns that have played out in your journey so far. Some of these definitely give us opportunities but others can be more challenging and a more intimate understanding of these helps us to seize our potential more firmly. Please see the link beneath this video for more on this unique opportunity. So Sagittarius, let's unpack August for you. It begins with a full moon in the sign of Aquarius, which is a friendly sign, but for you this is house three, everyday communication. The sun on the other side of the heavens, along with Venus, in its retrograde in house nine. So it's possible that this full moon is going to trigger that big desire that many archers have to explore. This depends on your unique circumstances, whether you decide to explore in a physical context by booking a travel plan, or it is something you can explore from the comfort of your home in terms of a course, uh, some knowledge, or doing some research. If you are someone who's got a story to tell, this full moon could give you the incentive and momentum to take the next steps forwards to enthuse other people about your idea. But also right at the start of this month, as I intimated before, on the first day, Jupiter in house six, very much about service, details, organization, commitment and obligations, but also physical health, is forging a terrific link with Mars. In fact, this goes through the first week. Mars is in a very ambitious and assertive part of your situation. If you're hoping to go for a job, the word power of the full moon and the confidence and drive of Mars's alignment with Jupiter is a winning formula. What's not to like? Well, it's just that Saturn, the planet of limitation, is in your emotional zone, the fourth house, and is limiting the energy of Mercury, the planet of communication, across the first four days, but particularly on the second. So just be aware that just when a big opportunity comes to pass, you may find yourself having a little uh, jagged edge of, com of lack of confidence, and it's important to keep the faith. It's also possible that you don't lack the self-confidence, but someone around you may you know, make some kind of telling comment that could just get under your skin a little bit. But the other thing to know is that Jupiter is also in a square with the Sun through the first 10 days. And that part of your nature which likes to be free, emphasized by the Sun and Venus in house nine, may need to make way a little bit for the obligations and responsibilities Jupiter wants you to take on. 
which which route are you going to take are you going to take the route of the full moon urging you to break out or are you going to try to find a balance between what you want for you which excites you and where you need to be a little bit more obligated to others so there's a little bit of a dilemma there if you really want to make a breakthrough in terms of your career and success i feel that as this month goes on then you should go for the opportunity that mars and jupiter give you if you're someone who's much more mindful of breaking away from what's expected of you and enjoying your freedom then obviously that's fine and it may be that time to book that gap year or to change the job that's not very fulfilling it just depends on what you're able to do for you but mercury in your sector of success does go into its pre-retrograde shadow on the fourth this is the degree when Mercury gets to the end of its retrograde in the middle of September that it will rotate back to. However, the retrograde itself doesn't occur through to the 23rd, but do expect there could be some slowing down. So even if you are trying to make some kind of big, big breakthrough with your work, it may not be an instant uh, occurrence. That said, Mercury and Jupiter forge a wonderful link in week two. So despite the pre-retrograde shadow, this is the planet of commerce, Mercury, linking with the planet of trade, Jupiter. And that can be a real winning mix, just like Mars and Jupiter. So if you really want to put that freedom love inside of your nature to one side, there is a huge opportunity for you this month, for sure. It just may not pan out exactly as you think it will, Sagittarius. Now, of course, Venus is in retrograde all through this month, but in your sector of truth, higher truths, the ninth house. If you are traveling, it could mean that if you're in an exotic location, somebody could absolutely uh, spellbind you with their presence or you with yours. Just be aware that Venus forges an, a stunning alliance with the North Node in the first week of this month. The North Node back in your sister fire sign of Aries for the first time in 17 years that alliance with Venus can be very enabling if you're wanting to connect with someone in a more spiritual way where it feels that you're being drawn towards that situation and it just feels right but there is a real dichotomy you can stay in the more material world this month and make huge progress or you can stay in that part of you that wants to follow your heart there is a choice. However, from the 11th to the 14th, as the Sun and Venus get closer together, they come into an exact Kazemi on the 13th. If you are in a relationship where you feel someone is not necessarily evolving in the way you want, you don't necessarily feel they're as honest or truthful or transparent as you need, this could be a telling point because of the retrograde. On the other hand, if you're single, this uh, connection between the Sun and Venus can propel into your consciousness what you can gain from connecting to someone, not just by how they look, but also what they stand for, what their values are, and the connection could be profound. But there's no doubt about it, the clash that goes on between Jupiter and the Sun early in the month is then followed by a clash between Uranus and the Sun around the time of the new moon on the 16th. Now ordinarily the Leo new moon for you is fantastic for really getting your creative juices going when it comes to changing things up, being more adventurous, independent, exploring, getting off the beaten track, taking some risks. But because Uranus is in the sixth house, I feel there's a lot riding on this particular phase of your life. You're realizing that as much as you can wander and that will give you a, a great deal of satisfaction and, and feed your innate sense of curiosity, there is another part of your nature that needs to have a more grounded sense of, of, of its being. And of course, because you've got Saturn and Neptune in house four, you're being pushed to open up around your emotional dimension. However, on the 23rd, the Sun moves into your sector of success, but on the same day, Mercury in the same zone does go into that formal retrograde. 
On the 28th, however, Mars moves out of your sector of success, where it's been very assertive and helps you to come across in a much more dynamic way, but moves into a very friendly location where it will be for the following six weeks. You're someone who's a supreme networker at the best of times, and that's really going to be emphasized in that period of time. And that can be important for work and goals and ambitions as much as it can for our personal needs. But on the 29th, Uranus does go into a retrograde through to the 27th of January. If you do have a job, a, a role, uh, a, a, a formulae in your life that you're having to be kept to because you need to earn the money, you need to pay your bills, you need to keep things fairly regular, keep yourself in health and hearth, but you're resentful about it in some ways, Uranus is going to shine a light on that through to the 27th of January. Then on the 31st, we have the second of the four moons of this month, the blue moon, the sturgeon moon in the sign of Pisces. But what makes this potentially quite tricky is it's very close to Saturn. When we apply Saturn to the moon, we get coldness. And the fourth house is about emotion, but also about where we live. So the sun position, along with the retreat in Mercury, is in your sector of how you connect to the wider world. So there's a polar opposition there. Saturn makes you much more conscious of your emotional and domestic needs and where you live and the needs of people who depend on you, whether it's children, elderly parents or whatever. So just at the point where you may want to seize a big prize, there could be some inhibition that comes from the role of Saturn. And of course, Saturn applies to Mercury right at the start of this month as well. So you get a taste of it then, a taste at the end of the month, that whether you want to go for the rock and roll approach and embrace the Sun and Venus in the ninth house and the freedom love in more hedonistic side of your uh, attraction, or you want to get into the Virgo stuff, which is very much about cutting through, punching through, and really uh, focusing very seriously on where you can create success and greater recognition, there may be something you have to give. And I think that what Saturn does for you at the start and end of this month is just remind you that the more seriously you can take your emotional development, the more you will actually thrive, whether it is as a natural explorer or whether it is as a big success. But you need to have it all worked out at who you are in terms of your emotional identity. And that's what the start and the end of this month is about. And with Mercury retrograde from the 23rd and in that shadow from the 4th, if you do rethink within your goals and ambitions, your actual place in life, or you go through some retraining, or you move to a different role, which you don't find just as work a day, and it's more in, in, more engaging and more challenging in some ways, makes you think more, that actually could be a really good thing to do. And that will feed into your soul energies, Saturn in the fourth house, in a very positive way. So it's quite the dynamic month, Sagittarius. There's lots of options, but also lots of opportunities for you personally to go for. Please like, comment, share or subscribe.